down and he forced me and then he did it. <laughs> I told you a hundred times, I didn't rape her. It's my job to recognize the truth and I've been doing that job for 11 years. more, effective police work is hinging on the ability of agents in the field to gather accurate information and to arrive at the truth through interviews and interrogations. They are part of a process which usually starts with obtaining the information that provides a description of the crime. Don Halsey received the original complaint in the Darlene Bills case. And, and then, like I told you, he made me. I struggled and everything, but, but, but I couldn't stop him. And, and, and that's what happened. What else can I tell you? Darlene, I'm sorry. I know how upset you are and how hard this is for you. But I have to ask you some questions and get some more specific information. You know this is a pretty serious matter, don't you? And not only for you, but for us, too. Before we can do anything, the law requires that we obtain precise information, details that are pretty intimate. I know how you feel. But you're the only one who can tell us what we have to know. I'll try and make it as easy for you as I can. Will you try and help me? All right, you say this happened at 0130. How about starting with the events that led up to it? Where were you at about 2130, say 930 last night? Well, uh, I was at the Four Winds Club with my girlfriend. Do you want to tell me her name? Patty. Patty Ames. Uh, she works in the transportation section. Well, we, we went there at about 9 o'clock uh, to have a couple of drinks. You know, dance a little. Have a good time. Uh, the same reason everybody goes. Of course. Well, we were sitting at the table, and um, around 9.45 or so, these two guys came over. Uh, Patty knew one of them, and uh, he introduced his buddy, Eddie Logan. They asked us to dance, and uh, we said, sure. Patty's friend's name was what? Billy. Billy Wolfson. Would you say that Patty and Billy knew each other pretty well? Well, I really don't know. But it didn't matter. They seemed all right. You know, just a couple of ordinary guys. And uh, after a couple of dances, they brought their drinks over to our table. And uh, we just sat around drinking, dancing, talking, you know. Can you remember how many drinks you had? Uh, three, four, I don't know, maybe five. No big deal. We'd finish one and then, uh, you know, just order another round. Would you say they were trying to get you drunk? I don't think so. Were they drunk themselves? No. Uh, a little high, maybe, but uh, everybody seemed OK. Well, Eddie was on the make, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, guys usually are when that kind of music is playing. Were you turned on? Well, sure, I love to dance. How about Eddie? Was he turned on too? He sure was. You can always tell on those slow numbers. You know when you dance close? All right, then what happened? Well, about 12 o'clock, uh, Patty said she had a headache and that Billy would take her back to the barracks in her car. It was okay with us. And Eddie would take me in his. She said they hated to break up the party, but, you know, it really wouldn't matter as long as everybody had a ride home. Do you think she really had a headache? Well, I don't know. She said she did, so I suppose she did. What do you think? I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say. Did she act like she had one? Well, she acted like, uh... She and Billy were, you know, kind of interested in each other. Maybe they wanted to be alone for a while. Do you know her very well? Well, ever since basic. Maybe she didn't have a headache. So that wasn't a reason for leaving? Well, maybe they wanted to go somewhere and, you know, make out a while. Make out? You know, make out, have sex. Well, having sex doesn't really tell me very much, darling. What do you think they wanted to do? You know, have sex, relations, sexual intercourse, whatever you want to call it. On the it. level, darling. 
Did you know this when Patty said she was leaving because she had a headache? I guess so. Yeah, sure I knew. Otherwise, she would have suggested that we both leave unless I wanted to stay with Eddie. And did you? No, honest. I, I mean, I was having a good time, but I didn't feel that way. All right, well, what happened after Patty and Bellion left the club? Well, Eddie and I had a couple of more drinks, and then we left. What time was that? About one o'clock, I guess. And you left in Eddie's car? That's right. All right, what happened after you left the club? Well, after we drove for a little while, Eddie uh, said that he was feeling a little too drunk to drive, and he wanted to stop for a couple of minutes to sober up a little. Well, I didn't like the idea very much, but there wasn't much I could do about it. You could have offered to drive. Well, sure, I know that now, but I didn't think of it then. Anyway, we stopped. Do you know where? Yeah, um, you know that, that dirt road off of Patton Drive, the one right past the warehouses? Could you identify the exact location? I think so. All right. You stopped, then what happened? Well, before I knew it, he was all over me like an octopus. Did he say anything first? Well, f first he mumbled something about knowing girls and, and then something about uh, Patty and Billy. But before I knew it, there he was. Darling, did you say anything, indicate in any way that you wanted him to make love to you? No, nothing. He just started grabbing at me. Kissing you? No, grabbing my breasts, uh, trying to put his hands under my skirt. What did you do? Well, I told him to quit and I pushed his hands away. What did he say? Oh, he said, quit pretending that he knows I want it just as much as he does. And you were in the front seat all this time? That's right. And I wasn't even sitting close to him. He kept grabbing at me and, and trying to push me down on the seat. I pushed him and I punched him and he wouldn't stop. Even when I scratched him hard. I, I, I could feel my nails digging in. Then, then somehow he had my arms under me so I, I, I couldn't hit him anymore. And, and he was on top of me, forcing my knees apart, and, and, and he tore my panties, and, and then he did it. Did what, darling? Like I said. Darling, I'm afraid you're going to have to be a little bit more specific. Well, how much more specific can I get, for God's sakes? Darling, what you've said so far tells me that you could have been raped. But just you saying he did it to me isn't enough. You understand, don't you, that I can't be in the position of putting words in your mouth. I also know that you might be embarrassed to tell me these details. But it is important to the investigation that you tell me in your own words exactly what he did. And if you feel you can't tell me, then you could write your answer down on paper. Well, oh, while he was leaning on me, uh, holding me down, he... He opened up his pants and uh, took out his took out his penis and uh, then he raped me. Darling, did he actually penetrate you? Yes, he raped me. All right, then what happened? Oh, when he was finished, he he he, he sat back and and he was putting himself together and. So I jumped out of the car and started running back to the main road. Well, when I saw his car coming, I jumped into the bushes alongside the road to hide. I knew he was looking for me. What were you afraid of? Well, him. I didn't know what he might do. And after that? Well, when I, when I saw him take off, I went to the intersection of the main road and, uh, I, 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 I flagged down the first car that came along. What happened? Listen, I just got raped. Could you help me? Could you drive me to the hospital? I got, get, get in the back of the car. I got in and... That was Master Sergeant and Mrs. Arthur M. Harrison? That's right. Do you have the tissue, please? Here. Thank you. Well, they took me to the post hospital. Don Halsey's initial interview with Darlene also included a detailed description of Eddie and his car, but she hadn't gotten his license number. Later, Don visited Captain Hartman at the post hospital. When she was brought in at 0147, 
Vital signs were normal. And although she was extremely distraught, she wasn't hysterical or incoherent. Vaginal smears taken during a pelvic examination have been forwarded to the hospital laboratory for analysis. The examination showed no contusions or abrasions of the vulva, vaginal orifice, or internal tissues. Now here's your 4137 and the stuff you want to send down to the crime lab. Your torn panties, fine combings of the pubic hairs, scrapings taken from underneath the fingernails, and the instruments the scrapings were taken with. Now, these are scrapings of dried patches of a foreign substance found on the anterior surfaces of her thighs, about halfway down to her knees. But there were also stains on her dress. You'll have to get those for yourself. Otherwise, uh, there were bruises on the insides of her thighs, another on the left side of her neck. And that's about it. I've signed you 4137, and if there isn't anything else, I'll make out my report and get it over to you as soon as I hear from the lab upstairs. Thanks, Al. I'd appreciate it as soon as possible. In the meantime, what do you think? About what? Come on. You know what I mean. Was well, she raped or wasn't she? I shouldn't say, and I really wouldn't want to, because, well, honestly, I just, I don't know. Okay, that's official. But what's your personal opinion? I'd like to know where I'm headed here without waiting for any lab reports. Okay, what can I tell you? Off the record, what have I got here? Okay, off the record. As far as rape's concerned, her emotional state and other subjective indicators are positive. Physical indicators neither confirm nor deny. She's not a virgin, hasn't been for quite a while. But whether she had intercourse tonight or not, I just can't tell till I get those smears back from the lab. But there were no obvious traces of semen. Okay, so what's your personal feeling? My personal feeling? Assault? Probably. Attempted rape? Possibly. Actual rape with penetration? Dubious. Other special agents assigned to the case as soon as it was reported were covering other aspects, including the collection of physical evidence, apprehension of the two soldiers, and interviews with other involved persons. Agent Orville Kelly was assigned to interview the Harrisons. The way young people carry on nowadays, nothing surprises me. It's disgraceful. And if you try to help them, all you get is trouble. Look. The police in my house at 3 o'clock in the morning. And your questions, why, if you ask well, me... You were in the car with your husband at approximately 1.30 this morning, weren't you, Mrs. Harris? I certainly was. We were coming back from my daughter's house. And believe me, when I brought her up, she wasn't allowed... Where did allowed. your daughter live, Mrs. Harris? My daughter and her husband live in Hyattsville, a very respectable community where girls where aren't allowed... Where was Miss Bills when you first saw her? Oh, you mean that, that woman that we picked up and took to the hospital? Yes, that's right, Miss Harris. Is her name really Bills? I thought probably she was using... tell me where it was and what she was doing? Well, I was looking at the speedometer like I usually do when it seems to me that Arthur's going a little too fast when all of a sudden he began stopping. And I looked up... Where was this, Mrs. Harrison? We were on Patton Drive, just this side of the warehouses. We usually turn off on the other side of the post engineers, but this what time... What was Miss Bills doing when you first saw her? Well, she was waving her arms, trying to get us to stop. And when I saw her in that skirt, almost up to but her... she did stop, and she did get into the car, didn't she, Mrs. Harris? Yes. No. I didn't think very much of the idea, but you know how it is when... What did she well. say when she got in? Well, she seemed very upset, but if you ask me... Can well, you tell me what she said? Yes, I can. I mean, no. Do you remember what she said? Of course I remember. <laughs> but look here, young man. You may be an investigator and all that, but there are some things... Could you write just... down what she said?
Would you say she behaved as if this were true? I say she acted as though it were. And a very good actress she was, too. But any woman who would wear a skirt that short and that tight shouldn't be surprised. But did she seem uh, upset? Well, yes. Well, what happened after she got in your car? Well, we took her right straight to the post hospital. That's what happened. My husband took her right inside. Well, did she say anything that, uh, on the way to the hospital? Nothing that made any sense. She was sniffling and crying all the time, and twice she asked me for Kleenex. Do you remember what time you arrived at the hospital? No, I don't. But I can say this. She left those two pieces of dirty, wet Kleenex in the back of the car. Mrs. Harrison, where are those now? I flushed them down the toilet. And what on earth anyone would want them for, I can't imagine. We were driving south on Patton Drive. After entering the post of gate three, roughly zero, one thirty. Roughly two miles after we entered the gate, just north of the engineer's warehouse, you know where that is? Yeah. There's a girl standing on the side of the road waiting for me to stop, which I did. She come over to my wife's side of the car. My wife rolled down the window. She said she'd been raped and asked if we'd take her to a doctor. I said, get in the back of the car. We drove to the post hospital. Arriving there at 0146. And when I went inside, I turned over to the hospital CQ. Specialist, uh, big fella. Henderson. I identified myself and we left. My wife and I, we came back here to our quarters in MacArthur Heights. What would you say her emotional state was when she came over to the car? She was crying. She seemed very distraught. Did she appear to have any difficulty walking as she came over to the car? She ran to the car. Once she was in the car, did she say anything? Identify her assailant or anything like that? Nah. She just kept crying. Twice she asked my wife for a piece of Kleenex. Well, that just about does it, Sergeant, unless you can think of anything else that would be helpful to us that she might have said. No, not really. Not really. She... She said she'd been raped and the way she was behaving. I'd be inclined to believe her. She's a pretty girl. It's a shame. Real pretty girl. Okay, you're Special Agent Longworth. Who's she? This is Special Agent Gilberti. It's customary to have another female present, Miss Ames, when a male agent interviews a female witness. Witness to what? We'd like to ask you a few questions. You can sit here. Special Agents Longworth and Gilberti interviewed Patty Ames at the WAC detachment. Specialist Ames, you do know Darlene Bills, don't you? Sure, she's a friend of mine. So what? Well, Darlene and a soldier named Eddie Logan had some trouble this morning after they left the club, and we're trying to clear it up. Do you know Eddie Logan, too? I just met him tonight. Or last night, whatever you want to call it. Hey, do I have to answer your questions? It could be very helpful to your friend Darlene if you would. And maybe get myself into trouble. Well, I can't see how, Patty. What we're after, honestly, is your help. And we wouldn't be here at this hour of the morning if we really didn't need it. Well, okay. Let's get it over with so I can go back to bed. Patty, were you at the club last night with Darlene Bills, Eddie Logan, and Billy Wolfson? Well, I went with Darlene alone, but Billy and his friend Eddie Logan joined us later. What time would you say you arrived at the club? About 9 o'clock. And the two men joined you when? About 9.30. When did you leave? Billy and I left around midnight. I don't know when Darlene left. What did you use for transportation? My car. Eddie was going to take Darlene home in his. Where did you go after you left? the club? Back here, after I dropped Billy at the Post Theater parking lot where he'd left his car. Can you tell me what kind of car that is? I didn't see it. I just dropped him at the theater parking lot. Do you remember what time it was when you got back here to your barracks? Well, about, um... Well, actually, we didn't go straight to the Post Theater parking lot. We uh, stopped off at Sharky's Pizza. Are you sure, Patty? 
I remember something about Sharky's closing at 2400, 12 o'clock. And that's the time you left the club. All right. So we didn't go straight to the Post Theater parking lot and we didn't stop off at Sharky's Pizza. So what? Would you tell me where you did go? No, I wouldn't. And if you're going to keep asking questions like that, we can call it quits right now. Well then, uh, may I ask, did you see Darlene or Eddie Logan at any time after you left the club? Okay. No, I didn't. By the way, how long have you known Billy? Four or five days. I met him at the NCO club. Had you dated him before? Twice, besides last night. Do you know what unit he's in? I don't have any idea. Do you know what unit Eddie Logan is in? No, I told you. I never saw him before last night. Patty, would you say that you know Darlene pretty well? Yeah, I guess so. We took our basic training together, and we've been friends ever since. But if you want to know anything about her, ask her yourself. She's a good friend, and I'm not going to talk about her. Period. Patty, the reason we're here is because Darlene Bills was brought into the post hospital this morning at 0147, claiming she had been raped. You're putting me on. By Eddie Logan? Is she all right? I mean... As far as we know, she's all right physically. What we need is information on Darlene. Do you think she was raped by Eddie? Or did she submit willingly? If she did it. I don't believe she did it willingly. Why do you say that? Look, she gets her share. We both do. But we've had a rule ever since basic. I've never broken it, and I don't think she has either. What rule is that? Never do it on the first date. Even if you like the guy. She just met Eddie last night, and I don't think she even liked him that much. Well, then, let me put this as delicately as possible. Do you think it's possible she let him on? Teased him, perhaps, until... No, she doesn't operate that way. As soon as the subject comes up, she lets him know right off. If it's the first date, no way. You seem pretty definite about that. I am. Do you want to know anything else? As a matter of fact, I do. If it's about Darlene, forget it. What we were wondering is if you could help us locate Billy Wolfson. Oh, now, wait a minute. He was with me. He didn't have anything to do with anything that happened last night. If you want to know about his boyfriend, ask him. Don't drag me into it. Patty, there is no soldier on this post named Billy Wilson or William Wolfson or anything like it. What are you trying to tell me? There isn't any Eddie or Edward Logan, either. You mean... We believe both men were using fictitious names. Phony, huh? If that's the word you prefer. We're wondering if you could give us a description of them. Sure. And I can do even better than that. Like what? Billy, my good friend, Billy Wolfson, has a date to meet me at the club tonight at 8.30. Do you think he'll keep it? After last night? Yeah, I think you'll keep it. 